Welcome to episode 100. We've hit the century mark on the LOTD pod, the Left of the Dial podcast. Uh, once again, it, it's all of us together uh, for an episode. It, it, I'm, I'm Flick, along with Rudy and Richard. How are you guys doing? Yo. Uh, yeah. I've, uh, wow, it's, it's 100 <laughs> uh, episodes already, huh? Sneaks up on you. It, yeah, it sneaks up on you. That's an achievement, though. Um, I don't. I don't know who's going to do the archiving of the internet and this sort of first generation of podcast technology. But the number of podcasts out there that got to like nine episodes and stopped greatly outnumbers the uh, the ones that made it to a hundred. So uh, that is there's some equity in there, I think. So yay. Yeah, but 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 this can't still be first generation now. Technically well, not, but. Before Maybe. everyone tunes out, uh, how did how did Left of the Dial podcast start, Sean? Sean and Rudy. Well, um, uh, actually, I, I want to mention something quick uh, before before. Um, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, d- d- b- before we go into like a, a retrospective thing, um, I just wanted to mention a. a, a something you know like last week uh fortunately one of the two big shows i wanted to go see what um did stay on the schedule so uh there were it was going to be like something i looked forward to the whole summer was uh spoon was going to be playing here in des moines uh, a couple of thursdays ago and then wilco was scheduled for last thursday and i was looking forward to, to that the whole summer um but spoon canceled because of the covid situation here in in uh, iowa uh, wilco did stay uh scheduled and uh it was a good show and i i think it's well documented i love wilco uh one thing that was very cool um that uh at one point um tweety uh jeff tweety went into one of the older wilco songs and he said uh this one goes back to the games oasis days Oh wow! Okay, nice, deep cut. Yeah, it it ended up being slightly disappointed because I was hoping at that point he was going to play New Madrid, perhaps, but he played a uh, box full of letters. But uh, but yeah, I mean it. it it's kind of cool that uh, after all this time, um, you know, Gabe's Oasis, our our Gabe's Oasis in Iowa City, uh, it's it stays in the memory banks. It was, uh, that's a classic. Pretty unforgettable, yeah. Yeah, That's that's a uh, classic. Yeah. That does actually answer your question a little bit, Richard, though, which is the, uh, Flick and I know each other from, I I don't know if it's the origins of the podcast, but we worked together in radio 25 years ago, right? Flick, or did we? Yeah, you were on, I think we didn't Uh, work at the same uh, station then. Yeah, yeah, at at this point. So What's that? I've known you and we've been talking about music going back 25 years. Like we just started recording things yeah. that have been ongoing in one form or another for 25 years. You were one of my, um, you were one of my Beck Odelay friends. So <laughs> you, know, right. you were, yeah. I had a couple people who knew that record really well and was like, really into that and like Paul's boutique and tried to figure out what was going to go. You were one of my, uh, Odelay friends. Yeah. And, and that was, uh, one of those things that, you know, like immediately when that came out, I don't know, don't know if it was just that we both had got it right away or if, if, uh, or, or if I had it and then, you know, made you listen to it or, or I don't remember how that all went, but, but like, yeah, it, it immediately when Odelay came out, that was that was like a, I remember that was like a, a big atom bomb for the both of us. Yep, uh, and it made completists. We were both completists about it, and were both trying to scoop up the singles from the record when we could find them. Because again, mm-hmm. this is yeah, this is yeah. like Cedar Rapids, Iowa, in 1993 or something like that. Like there there weren't a lot of stores that had imports at all. 
let alone well you know, well, yeah i mean iowa city yeah iowa city is where where you would go to do that yeah uh and then who make music this is terrible stuff but back then we were making a very little money and we would swap a little bit with each other like oh i was able to get you know i got the sissy next single here are the b-sides so and uh i think uh <laughs> we both liked uh the beer and then i think we both really was the music out started to get is just beck completism that's my that's my recollection is that even close to yours yeah and and i remember like your well uh one of those big things was getting like the jabberjaw cd um with with uh cold yes. ass fashion but then like the big score were um i i don't know if this was something you got in new york or what it was but but the uh the make out city the the make out yeah. city remix of of uh where it's at. all right oh, sorry man, that, Richard, this um, is gonna yeah that was one of the <laughs> This is going to go off the rails. <laughs> uh, so I do specifically remember that because Makeout City was only available, I believe, on a sampler that was given away at like a, on, on the Vans Warped Tour, I think, or the Vans Shoe Tour of that year. That was really, really hard to get. This is like the pre Discogs mm -hmm. era, and it did require. And I'm I'm channeling. Uh, what was the band that had the song about walking up and down St. Mark's, looking at stuff being sold on blankets? Uh, King Missile. Um, it, like it was like a out of King Missile. Like you literally would. That's that's where I would find stuff like that. So yes, I was very excited. So Richard, that's kind. This is kind of the answer. <laughs> is the immediate like the, that inner foaming nerd for music just started to fly out of a couple i mean flick neither you and i were lifers for radio i you know i don't know if you felt like you were going to make it the whole way at the time nah. i kind of knew well, by then i was a short timer that it was just for fun you know yeah i mean my my uh my ambition for radio was always to to do play baseball play by play so um so that was really you know the i, I was never there for radio because i because I knew early on, like actually, um, when I went to broadcasting school, uh, I talked to to uh, to one of the. This was in Minnesota. I talked to one of the DJs from uh, KQRS, um, the uh, the big classic rock station in 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 Minnesota, and you know, just had a conversation with him, and it's like, you know, if. He was like, if you like music, this isn't really the the business for you. And so I <laughs> if if I didn't know that already, I, I I knew that, you know, being a music fan, it just wasn't really uh, the life of a DJ was not going to be my life. Well, unfortunately, and Richard, I want to cut you back in here. I'm sorry. No, no, I've loved hearing this. Uh, this is very touching stuff because, yeah, I mean, I, identifying with someone is instantly your friend. Over through music. Heart, yeah, it it's... I, I've made so many great friends that way, including Sean and, you know, like one of my best buddies in college, uh, Sean, I think you met him a couple of times was Matt Eichner. And we got to be friends because he had a clash pin on, you know, it's one of the many beautiful things about, about music and specifically like yeah. the hard to find indie stuff where you already have your tribe. If you have people that are into the same things as you. Yeah, that really was it. And we both worked for a, a, this is a serious heritage AM radio station. This station is so old, they only have three call letters. The, the station is 50,000 <laughs> watt AM heritage news station. And Flick comes in to start doing, so I did a lot of my bumper music. I, someday I would love to, I'm going to literally bring all of the awesome bumper music I was able to get on the AM radio, a 50,000 watt AM radio station. I was able to get some zingers in, but Flick, doing the sports, played Sonic Youth's Bull in the Heather as the sounder. This, again, this is culturally, <laughs> like, it might as well have been 100 years ago culturally, and I am just kind of being an old man, being overly nostalgic here, but the idea that Sonic Youth was being played every single night on a Heritage CBS Network 
AM radio station. I mean, again, I guess in hindsight, that doesn't feel terribly revolutionary, but it, but that was a flag worth planting. And I, I deeply respected you for that, Mr. Flick. I thought That's that pretty was pretty cool. good. Yeah. I thought well, that was pretty good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. I mean, I was, I was uh, proud of, you know, like, just being able to say that even even if it is just for bumper music like i you know played big star on a station you know i on a radio station when um you know when it wasn't being played on a radio station probably anywhere uh really i mean h almost almost nowhere and hey, that was at least you know playing like big star getting a rush limbaugh out of chrissy hines bill you know what I mean? By having uh, My City Was Gone be his theme song for whatever, 25 years. That money does add up. It really does add up for them. So, yeah, I was very happy to play sort of, uh, I, I mean, I wasn't going completely crazy left field type stuff. But uh, Roxy Music's the main thing from the great Avalon, one of the all-time yeah. greatest albums in my humble opinion. I was, I, this the, the demographics. My show would have been people of retirement age. These are people who are up and can't sleep, and they've got the AM radio on all night. You know what I mean? And it was just an open forum. But uh, I, you know, I played Roxy music uh, as my bumper music. I had people calling in like, "What? what is that song you're playing? Like, this is just AM talk radio, and people wanted to call and talk about Roxy music. So that was a lot of fun. <laughs> I actually think about the bumper music more than I think about the show. I, I don't know. That was a really interesting time and flick you're you're you did end up doing sports broadcasting right you did you you went out you, you got a shot yeah i i um i worked for a, a minor league uh, affiliate of Cubs for a, a while there yeah and then anyway we can we can bring it all back to earth but this did begin a friendship in which well i moved to new york or i lived in california for a long time like you richard you're you don't we don't you don't see flick on a day to day basis or anything like that. It, music is something that can allow you to keep an, a friendship alive with someone you've known for a long time. Like it's one of the few places where you can talk about old stuff and it's not just like soppy nostalgia because talking about old music is fun too. Music is very pliable as a basis for a friendship because flick and I. I mean you you know you know flick across the miles. I've had many years where I didn't live anywhere near Flick, but we met in Memphis and we went and did some music. We went to Sun Studios and Stacks and did a bunch of. Uh, oh yeah, cool. We had a great time in and. Uh, huh. And and Ardent too. Yeah, we went to Ardent. We we flew and we did a Northwest tour. We hit. Uh, we saw M Ward in uh, Vancouver. That was a good show. Uh, we we saw. Uh, we went to Portland, right? I think we went to Portland and Seattle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah uh yeah uh we went we uh we met in seattle uh then went to vancouver then back to seattle for a few days and then down to portland then uh back to oakland yeah real uh music tourism and then we did uh detroit uh we went to detroit and had a good time like again it's uh music is uh it, though, i mean we picked it you know what we flick i'm sorry to do this and i'm sorry but uh we have to we we had an idea of doing like a brackets for cities. I think Detroit and Memphis uh, are about as good a music city as you can get. I think we picked well. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean when we went to Detroit it wasn't necessarily a music trip either, but but uh we we went to see uh, a uh a baseball game. True. Uh, the you know, Tigers played the Twins. Uh but it was kind of a music trip just because um yeah, I remember I had uh, like my uh, laptop, you know, what like my uh, my old um, my old uh, MacBook. It had, you know, just it was just loaded with with my MP3s, and you know, while while we were driving driving in, you know, I just uh, was was uh, putting together like this massive playlist of all Detroit artists, <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the whole the whole way to and from Detroit was listening to just Detroit music. Yeah, some Stooges, some Motown. All right. Yes, Motown, um, some Dirt Bombs, uh, so, you know, White, White Stripes. Stripes for sure. Yeah. Uh, 
We did. Did I'm, we hang I'm with San sure. Francisco too? You came out yeah. to San Francisco. Well, did we see any shows? Yeah. Well, the the first time I came out, um, we went to see the uh, the Download Festival, which was headlined by Beck. Yeah. Um, yeah. The yeah. 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 Has played mute the shins and uh you mean muse um yeah muse, muse. and the shins and, and tv on the radio uh, yeah so, they were yeah i mean good. It, yeah I'm, I'm not the biggest uh muse fan but you know like that was like the one down spot for me which probably was the reason a lot of people were there to begin with but uh, but yeah, I mean, like the the first band of the day was TV on the radio, so that's like an awesome awesome place to start. And then then the Shins and um, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody too. But yeah, the yeah yeah yes and Beck. I don't know they if I could good. be forgetting somebody in that, but yeah, it was, it was a really good good lineup. And uh, yeah, we saw Sonic Youth at the at the Fillmore. Yeah, that was a good show. Uh, then, yeah, then the other time was, was, you know, mostly, I mean, that was when we when we went to Vancouver and that stuff. So so I don't know that we saw anybody uh, play while in the Bay, Bay Area there. Yeah. Enjoying the poutine. Story of my life. The poutine was great. <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, yeah, Vancouver had that uh, poutine with chicken gravy, which was amazing. Mm, yeah, I got two thumbs up for me for Vancouver uh, as well. Okay, because we went to MEC as well. MEC, I, I like REI just fine, but MEC, oh no, oh, there's an active lifestyle store for you. Mm, good times, Richard. Have you done any uh, music tourism with any of your buds? I mean, obviously, maybe you have bandmates become your buds, but. You ever gone out of your way just to hang in a music town with somebody? Uh, weirdos. I, you know, I used to do that back in the day. Uh, <laughs> you know, like flying into, uh, I think, like going to the All Tomorrow's Parties Festival in LA when I was in college with a pal of mine. And, uh, and my wife, Susan, and I kind of still did that like up until pandemic, you know, like find a, a cool show in... Like, oh, let's go see Radiohead in Seattle, you know, rather than San Jose. And um, so, yeah, not recently, uh, obviously, but, uh, you know, it's always fun to kind of pin a uh, cool little vacation around a, a show. Like when we went to New York, we're like, oh, well, let's go see Woods and then plan everything around that, you know. Ooh, I'd like to see Woods one of these days. Oh, you should, you should. Yeah, they have some new stuff out I've been meaning to get to. Oh, I'm gonna, I didn't, yeah, you're a Woods fan, that's cool. Yeah, I love the, love those guys. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of planning a vacation, like, you know, I don't, I'm not always good at vacation because I don't like to go shopping as like a pastime. Right. You know, a right. lot of people do, uh, more power to them. But, uh, but yeah, having a, a cool rock and roll show you can just kind of plan plan around is, is so much fun and such a cool way to see a city and kind of identify like, oh, you know, this is where we'd see shows all the time if we lived here. Um, yeah, and going to South by Southwest, uh, the one time that I went when I covered it for a newspaper, um, that was great. Just, you know, really drinking from the fire hose. <laughs> Flick, you're a huge Austin fan. You've been to South by Southwest. Yeah. Um, what's that? Have you been there during South by Southwest? No, I mean that was uh, that was something I wanted to do like way back when, and then I guess by the time it became like something maybe I could do, it wasn't really the like the window was sort of closed on South by Southwest. I think because. The things that I hear about it now are that if you if there's you know a band you want to see, uh, you probably have to plan your day around that um, because the lines are going to be such that you're not going to get in to see something unless you make a point to stand in line for a really like maybe all day. Hmm. 
So it seems like the window's sort of closed on that one for me. I went to the Austin City Limits Festival, I think, the big outdoor one there, and uh, that was really good. I got to see Tegan and Sarah, which I got to say was awesome. Right on, man. So I rem- I re- if I remember that right, you, you went when the year when Neil was there, right? Um, I'm not sure. I went when it was uh, Tegan and Sarah, first aid kit, M83, um, and Afghan wigs. I got to see Afghan wigs, which uh, they, I felt very bad because like they, they were competing, I think, against another stage where there was some big up and coming band and they did not get the crowd that they deserved, Afghan wigs. What an underrated band. Holy cow. Sorry, now I'm getting, I'm just being an old person, being nostalgic. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's move it along. <laughs> but yeah, um, Austin, Austin, though, is, is kind of uh, amazing any time of year. Like uh, when, when I went, it was in September, there wasn't really anything going on, but it was still completely amazing. From what I hear, and I know this is a cliche, and I'll keep it very brief, I, Nashville has become a elite level outpost for um, nightlife and music and that sort of thing, and it's that's within a day's drive. That is a realistic drive for me, so I feel like I need to go to Nashville another time. I did get to see an outdoor concert of Bob Dylan in Nashville, and I picked it. I did tourism, just literally, this is what a cliche I am. I went so I could see him with the Nashville skyline. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm owned now. I can't. Uh, yeah, and deny Nashville, it. <laughs> Nashville is kind of on my list too, uh, because I've I've been to Nashville, but I've not really ever ever seen anything really in Nashville. I've I've been there, you know, like when um, uh, you know, like when I was uh driving to Florida. Because it's kind of the midway point, and and uh, just spent the night there basically. Um, some something I need to experience as a, I guess as a tourist, uh, but I, but you know as yeah. a music fan, I, I need to uh, go to Nashville and take it in. You know, I, th- I think probably one of my favorite uh, shows of seeing Frank Black and the Catholics was in Nashville at the Exit Inn. Like this totally cool punk rock bar. Um, I just remember it being so loud, but really great. And going to the bar and trying to order nine Miller High Lifes at one time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a bad time in Nashville or Memphis. I think uh, I think I like Tennessee. I don't think you can miss. Even Knoxville is pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking there are some places in Tennessee that are misses. It's a big state, but um, yeah, no, I did. Um, I I also got to you know try see what that whole thing with the chicken is about in in Nashville. See what that what's up with that. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna. I don't think you're gonna have a bad time, Flick. Uh, the Third Man store there's good, um, too. I think he had a press implant there when we went. It's a funky store, um, and you definitely need to make time for it. Plus, the Country Music Hall of Fame. It sounds like you might need three days. That's I'm going to make a bold call there. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Perhaps. I mean, I, I'm just... Uh, yeah, when, when travel becomes a viable thing, I guess, for me again, you know, then, then I think that that's something I would do. I, I'm not sure, you know, when that point is going to come for me. Um, you didn't mention, I, when you had mentioned which shows you were interested in, I thought for sure you were going to mention the Jonathan Richmond Bonnie Prince Billy double bill at the Angler Theater last week. It's not on your radar? Last week, huh? I, I didn't. I wasn't aware of it. I, I don't keep up on on what's ha- happening in Iowa City too much. I did go there to see the Jayhawks a couple. Uh, I don't know, a month or two ago. Um, you, you know, but that I I don't even know if I would have known about that. But that was around the same time we were doing a Jayhawk show here, and it made me think. 
I'm going to try to see them live sometime if I can. And it just so happened they were playing in Iowa City around the same time. Um, no, I didn't. I wasn't aware of that. I, it, I may I, have. I guess, uh, they yeah, are on things. tour together. They are touring together still, and they will be in Cleveland in uh, in March of 2022. So there's your shot. Is is are they playing together? Is it a double headliner thing? What, what it's, is? You know? It's actually Super Wolves, which is Bonnie Prince, Billy, and Matt Sweeney's super group, with Jonathan Richmond as the opening act. It appears. Ooh, okay. Well, I don't know if I if I uh, would have gone to Iowa City to see Jonathan Richmond as an opener. Hmm. Really? Maybe it it. Well, it's you know it's it's not as close to here as you would think it is. It's a couple of hours. It's a two hour drive. So if I ask you to come here to see Flo Rida at the uh, Rhythm City Casino, it's totally out of the question. He'll be here. <laughs> <We're>... <laughs> is that the, the Riverside uh, Casino? No, that's the Isle of Capri. This is a big oh. barn of a building up where seventy four and eighty meet. George Thorogood's coming in. You know, I'm going to say something nice for George Thorogood. At least he acknowledged he basically was a Bo Diddley ripoff in, in a lot of ways. At least he did something to try to aid uh, Bo Diddley. And you know what? He had some bangers, and I'm just going to say it. Bad to the Bone is a banger. And I think if you don't like Bad to the Bone, then you don't like music. There, I said it. <laughs> I can I can tell you I've, I've, I've heard bad to the bone so many times in my life that i don't really ever want to hear it again it doesn't doesn't mean that i think it's I, I guess that doesn't necessarily mean i don't that i think it's not a banger but i don't want to hear it ever again i really don't um, you don't have to i, I, every I don't even i don't even like to think about it <laughs> yeah you, you know but by the way though um i may maybe maybe a subject worth exploring there like, uh, do you have songs that uh, the radio ruined for you, but you found a way to reclaim them? Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, there She Goes by The Laws, for sure. Mm, okay, wow. but what radio station played that so much you couldn't stand it anymore? Like every, it was such a huge hit. Uh, yeah, I, it seems like it was everywhere in, in the early 90s, so... Um, yeah. But the Laws version? Yeah, yeah, the Laws version. Uh, well, I don't I don't remember ever hearing the Laws version on the radio. It did uh like uh I know um what was the big station in Chicago? W not WXRT, the 101. I think they played it. Cuz it was in that did oh, it yeah? get famous from that movie, from the Michael Myers movie about uh, marrying a... So I Married an Axe Murderer, yeah. which is a surprisingly yeah, that was the... funny movie. Holds up. Hmm. That was the Sixpence None the Richer doing their version of it, though. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm... Yeah, the, the Laws version is the one that I'm referring to. Yeah, Boy, I, I guess I wish I would have been listening to a radio station that would have been playing that. But yeah, in Iowa, no go. Yeah, I was chilling with like Bill Bill Graham presents people and all that stuff. So, yeah, uh, Billy Jean um, for me, maybe Billy Jean would be the closest I can think of where Michael Jackson was overexposed. I think even you know he would have said that. <laughs> I don't think. It was just unbelievable. It was well, amazing. That's, a, that's the weirdest thing about Thriller is that, yeah, I mean, I've heard it so many times, the album as well as the song, but it's still really good. And I could put it on is. Thriller like every day and have it be a really good record, despite having heard it like repeatedly. Um, maybe more than any other record I've ever heard. So it does have stay in power. Thriller yeah thriller for me would be an example of one that um i i definitely have heard too many times it you know like uh yeah and, and there there's so many rolling stone songs um but i think even like beast of burden was was something for a while i didn't want to hear it anymore but now i i listen to it all the time like it's it's such a huge thing to just um listen to something when you want to rather than just hearing it on the radio day after day after day oh yeah 
but yeah, I mean, Beast of Burden is is a song that um, it, it's amazing to me now that there was ever a point where it's just like, I'm so sick of this song. <laughs> but, you know, because I absolutely love that song. But, you know, like Start Me Up is a song, I think, because I didn't really care that much about, you know, like I don't. I don't think Start Me Up is all that great of a song, but unfortunately it's one of those Rolling Stone songs that has been played and played and played and played. And I, you know, like I, I don't think that that's a case of reclaiming it because I don't know that I ever really liked that song to begin with, but I couldn't be more sick of that song. You know what? I do love living back you know, in I Iowa. It's great here, Iowa. but I do have to listen to a lot of that classic rock everywhere I go. And it's, it's, it, it's bracing. Like you, you go into just, you're just buying some milk and you have to listen to slow ride. And it's not really like that anywhere in the country, but here, like, I, haven't these people had enough? How many times do you need <laughs> to hear slow ride? I mean, really, or, or even free ride by Edgar Winter. Like everywhere you go, it's, it feels like Ted Nugent is DJing. Uh, and I, I, it's, it's, it's hard. It's really, that's the hardest part of being here. Half these songs you're talking about, like, those are songs that you hear well, out of a meathead's car. Yeah, but but why do you have to listen to the radio? I mean, at this point, you know, that's not really... Like, like for me, um, it was good to just get to the point where I just, like, I, I don't, you know, I have uh, the option to listen to whatever I want when I want, um, so I'm not going to listen to the radio anymore because all it does is ruin things for me and um <laughs> well what and, if you're in the farm and then it store? throws commercials at me on, on top of that you know in every store they're playing the radio and you're pretty i don't think you can go more than an hour in this state without hearing hollywood nights by bob seger i just you, you can't Ooh, avoid it ah and, gross <laughs> It is gross. It's every if you're pumping gas, it's blaring out of the speakers. It's I don't know. It's like uh, it's also this place is like cash for clunkers past I will buy. So it's kind of like an old car museum, but it you know they're they're not collectibles. It's it's literally still like Buicks playing Bob Seger at high volume everywhere. It really does taint one's musical experience. I'm sorry, I just had to let that hand out. You're yeah, the only no, you're no. the only ones I can talk to. I, I I feel you, buddy. I uh I remember what that was like and uh I don't have to deal with that anymore. <laughs> it's just it's one of those things that makes like New York great is that if you just walk around New York all summer, you're gonna hear certain songs coming out of car windows and it's just gonna be a part of of, of that summer you're just going to remember like that is the big song of summer well you know the only big song of summer we ever have apparently is uh i don't know donny iris love is like a rock apparently that's every year oh hey hey hey, hey. <laughs> let's not drag uh donny iris down into the muck with this okay any rock song any about rock is fair game if you're gonna write a rock song uh about rock songs, you are fair game. I made I rest my case. What about rock and roll music? No, you know what? That's, um rock and roll uh, rock and roll by the Velvet Underground. Um this this is not I mean, first of all, when you when you say that, I know that you're you're thinking of just the worst examples of that, but there's so many Union that you're not Sundown. taking into consideration. I, I'm talking about that was John Cougar Mellencamp's America. You're right, like in the 60s. Rock and roll had some genuine danger to it. But by the 80s, like, it was the AWA wrestling characters were all like, you know, the good guys like rock and roll. Like, it was, it was, it, it had completely been defanged by that time. Come on. What, what do you need to sing? Well, Love is like a rock. Are you really, um, is, dear friend, is that, is <laughs> Is this really the borderline? First line? of all, love is like a rock. Is, love is like a rock isn't isn't referring to rock music. It's like it's like a rock that you you know pick up and throw or whatever. No, um, love can. So rock I mean that doesn't you. even that doesn't even. Uh, yeah, really? but is this the hill? But that, dear friend. <laughs> but that's but that's not there. It's not talking about rock music. I mean that's yes, that's like it uh, is. love. 
No, I mean, love can rock you like a like you rock back and forth in a chair, or you rock in somebody's arms, or you uh, know, I'm I hope or you being, get okay. or you get or you get rocked like uh, you're next to a, a, a garage that's exploding. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I fell asleep you know, like that's, a second. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's because. Yeah. Does your theory hold for the scorpions? Rock you like a hurricane? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Yeah, that's you're that, that, you're not even arguing in context. debates that's, now. I mean, okay, so I I know you like to make the argument against songs about music, but it's I mean, first of all, it you're again you're not taking the the best ones into consideration when you do that. But right. also, it, it's a different context here. Like when when somebody says I'm going to rock you. Um, well, I mean, I guess, I, I guess if uh, you know, like David Lee Ross says, I'm going to come out and rock you. He's probably talking about uh, music, mm-hmm. but, um, but maybe not. But uh, no, I mean, um, rock you is in in that context is like you know, like knock you around, you know, that sort of. No, rock, rock with you, like Michael Jackson, rock with you. That I think there's some. I don't think he's referring to rock. We're gonna rock you. We will rock. It's the you. same. They're going for the same thing. That's the, that's the same thing I'm talking about. All right. I I'm gonna ask us to move on, but I do so under protest. That's I just don't buy it. All right. Well, it's, Richard, it's out there for public record. All right, Richard, have you ever written a song about writing a song? Have you ever written a song about rock music? Uh, you know, I don't think I have. I'd have to, you know, I've got a pretty extensive back catalog. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it it is not really what I talk about, I suppose. So. I don't know if you could fill it. I, I don't know if we could have done an episode of just great songs about rock. Well, what the hell? We did do that episode. What are you talking about? No, we didn't. Yeah, we did. We no, did. We, we did songs about music. Yeah, we did. We did do that. Yeah, episode. I would say the subgenre um, is it has to be great songs specifically about rock and, and which they extol the virtues of rock. Like, you could say rock okay. around the clock or jailhouse so, rock. Those are two. Okay, so so here here are some examples. Um, Bring the noise by Public Enemy. That's a song about, about music. Um, uh, I see, I've got I, the music is, in me. This is all to me. These are all edge cases where Bring the Noise is about isn't about rock per se. It's a reference to the sound that well, Public I, Enemy I think, made. I, I think you're seriously splitting hairs if you're if you're saying there's a difference between uh, it, like something that's specifically about rock music and something that is definitely oh. about music, but maybe it's why Brian Johnson not the is, same exact kind of music. It's why Brian Johnson um, is at the end okay, of the day. So, is, no, so, no, so no. more 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 examples, more examples. American Music by Violent Femmes, uh, Rock and Roll by The Velvet Underground. I love Rock and Roll by Joan Jett. Uh, also, uh, uh, Arrow cover. Yeah. Um, uh, Velvet From Underground by uh, Jonathan Richman. Yeah, uh, Roadrunner by by the Modern okay, but Lovers. You're, you're, um, you're, I'm saying the, specifically songs about rock. With the, like every ACDC uh, album has like five of them, different ways of like one way to rock, the radio to rock. That doesn't have the word rock yeah. in it. Well, you, you're, but you're you're just okay. So now you're just. Uh, Honing in on the word rock, but yes, that doesn't mean it's that doesn't mean it's different subject matter just because it, it does. It speci- it does. Okay. Um, Meanwhile, I'm the looking spirit at our of radio chat, and by, everyone has spirit left. Of radio by Russ. Oh, I'm sorry. We we, we he, okay. Richard's right. Richard's right. Um, I'm okay. I'm gonna stand by my statement that there aren't ten great songs about rock music with the word rock in the title. Well, I'll be clear. But I will. Yeah, uh, that's will... you're getting you're getting way too specific with that one. I don't know. We started with uh, Donny Iris. I think. Yeah, I don't think that was too specific. Yeah, but there you're just going for the word rock and and not 
the subject matter. That's not it's different subject matter, but he uses the word rock. All right. Richard, would you prefer Ah Leah or Love is Like a Rock or The Rapper by the Jaggers? Of 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 Donny Iris's three biggest hits, do you have a favorite? I would walk away. In his oof. Yeah. You'd walk away. Walk away. <laughs> What do you got to say about that flick? That's the second uh, Donny Iris. I, I, you know, I, I think uh, um, I'll chuck that one up to uh, you know. You'll come around. That's that's uh, what I say. I won't wait up. I'm out of Donny Iris material. I'm not gonna lie. The Rock and Roll Fantasy by uh, by the Kinks is pretty good as well. Oh, okay. Well, what else is going on in, in anywhere? <laughs> you know, you're right. The tour schedules are just not there. It's not super robust yet. I haven't seen any must risk all shows. I haven't I haven't seen any tours like that. Am I missing something? I think there are a lot of tours. Uh, uh, I mean, there's yeah, definitely the, been yeah. a full, definitely been a full slate of uh, festival stuff happening lately. Did either of you go? No, but uh, Pitchfork uh, did like a live stream for. I don't. I'm wondering if they had um, multiple stages this year because. I think everything that they showed on the live stream was from the same stage. So I don't know if there was, uh, if they just didn't have the other stages this year or if, or if every, just only streaming things from one stage. But um, yeah, I watched, uh, I watched Angel Olsen. I watched her set. Um, uh, what do you think see. of her, uh, what do you think of her era uh, 80s covers EP? Uh, you know, I, I like, I like the OMD cover the best. I think just because I think it's kind of hard to not do a good version of that song. I think, you know, the, if you leave is the song I'm referring to. Yeah. Um, Cause maybe I shouldn't sell OMD short as, as like a one hit wonder, but most people definitely know that. Definitely not a one hit song. wonder. They're definitely not. They were, no, I can't but, tell if they were great but, or if they were cringy. I'm yeah. not sure. I, no, I think they were stuff. pretty good. I, I, I don't I don't think I, I put them on either poll that you mentioned, but I think they were pretty good um, is where I would put them. Definitely not cringy. I mean, but they, pretty good. they shared a bill with Joy Division. They were produced first by Martin Hannett, which isn't necessarily a trademark of quality, but they do have some genuine artsy pedigree. Um, the what's the album? The Dazzle Ships? That doesn't really have a great single on it, but it's a great album. Like they can make a great artsy record, but some of that stuff is really cringy. It's a tough one. Yeah. Um she so so Angel Olsen did do her cover of Gloria, and that was like the only thing from that album that that uh she did do on on the in that set. Uh I don't love that so much, you know. But yeah, and uh, what else? She she did safety dance. The eyes without a cover. Her... Uh, our eyes without a face cover. I thought is good, but I like Billy Idol. I I thought Billy Idol's first couple solo records were great, and that Last Generation X album was fantastic. Kiss Me Deadly is a great post punk album. It's not a great punk album, but boy, is that good. Sorry. You know the uh, the deep the deep cut on on generation x um that i i mean the the kind of obscure thing that is worth digging up they did a cover of uh give me some truth the john lennon song uh that is really great uh it's probably my favorite generation x or billy idol thing period yeah they had some good covers um i think they did shake it all over and did that well if i'm not mistaken I did see Billy no, Idol I heard with, that one. Billy Idol with the cult as the opening act in in Cedar Rapids in like 1986. Right. That was a pretty yeah. Billy Idol did all right for mid 80s. You know what I mean? He was an old punk. I think he put out a I don't know. 
he had a couple he's good still, records. He's still performing. Too. Uh, he, he's he's on tour right now, I think, Billy Idol. Yeah, he was good. He was way underrated, I think. He wasn't just a meathead. Uh, those were some of those were really good records. He had a good ear. He looked good too. Come on. He looked great. <laughs> <laughs> he looked great. And uh, Billy Ball. Billy Idol, I think, takes us back to to songs that the radio um, just buried into the ground for me. Like I don't ever want to hear White Wedding again. I don't ever That's need to fair. hear that. Again. That um, is fair. Uh, I do like dance, you know, like even though I've probably heard it just as many times, I, I do like dancing with myself. And um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. But but uh, White Wedding, just uh, no more. No more White Wedding for me. Thank you. You know, they did play dance with myself at like high school dances, I recall. I'm not sure if they did that out where you guys were in Iowa, but in the 80s in Iowa, you would hear dancing with myself at high school dances. And yet it was like peak PMRC and they were all worried about dirty lyrics and yet they played dancing with my Yeah, because they, well, well, because the, in their minds they're probably well, or like, well, how do we keep yeah. uh, boys and girls from not dancing with each other? Yeah. Right, yes. Yeah, that was a good show. That was a very good show. Although the cult played from the Electric album then, which... I got to say, um, not good. wasn't good. Love is such a better <laughs> album. <laughs> anyway, neither here nor there. Love is like a rock. That album by that the was, cult. Uh, no. Yeah, that was, that was the review of that one, I think. Somebody wrote, yeah, Love is like a rock. You're being passive aggressive now about uh, Donny Iris. <laughs> Just want that noted and uh -huh. I'll, I'll print up the merch. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I have uh, some inner Pittsburgh in me. I think that was getting out. <laughs> well, yins need to keep it to yourself. Move on. <laughs> uh, so um, I guess another thing that, uh, that I kind of think is worth discussing, like uh, since, since we started doing the show, um, uh, any... Any uh, shows stand out to you? Any any uh, thing that came from doing a show that stood out to you, as far as like uh, maybe maybe discovering a band from it or an album from it? I really liked all the uh, "I'm gonna make you love you." I'm gonna make you love me uh, shows. Those were yeah. really fun to just dive into a record that you know you, you're not you kind of know about or maybe you don't even know about, and and really soak it up so i i really enjoyed that you know it goes back to what we we're talking about with um with how you can you know music and friendship and and all of that so yeah like getting into jayhawks a few weeks back was really fun Ooh, really which really, one uh hollywood oh uh, yeah yeah i'm with flick on that one that feels like uh that's one that we would, if, I, if we're making a capsule for space to try to get stuff to make the aliens like us, I, that's a, you got to consider that one. Yeah, really cool, really cool album. So, yeah, those, those are good shows. Those are really fun. Yeah. I thought the Lou Reed and the Iggy Pop drafts were good. The Springsteen draft was good. Those are fun because not, you know, we all don't bring the exact same super fan depth with the article. Like, I, I did, your Bowie knowledge, yeah. uh, for example, Mr. Richard is. Uh, I can't compete with. That's thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Good stuff. But I enjoy those. That did force me into parts of the catalog that I just writ wrote off because I had maybe one bad experience. Yeah. And that was to me, the fun of it too, is just kind of like, uh, you know, going uh, like for the Iggy draft, um, some of those eighties albums and, and the eighties and nineties albums, you know, I hadn't given much time to, uh, and, on the whole, I didn't really like them as albums, but but they had they would you know each one of them would have like at least one song where it's just oh that's that song is you know worth worth the uh, the time that I put in on this is to just you know come across that one song that I probably wouldn't have, have uh, bothered with otherwise because I was focused more on on the parts of the catalog where it's just like yeah that's just an end to end 
great album. Um, yeah, I kind of I kind of like that. Like, you know, one thing that. Uh, well, I guess I, I don't want to I don't want to discuss topics that we didn't end up doing shows on because maybe we will at some point but um but anyway i'll just put it to you know it, it, it's to me when you listen to an album that isn't isn't you know an album that you want to listen to maybe a second time start to finish but you find one or two songs on it that you want to you want to keep in your uh playlist for that that artist or whatever to me that's worth it you know worth the the time that you put in yeah we yeah, may have asked you this before. I'm sorry if I forgot. Self concept music isn't like great quality music, but you enjoy it and you don't you you don't make any pretense that it's great. You just like it on its own terms, or you just like all music that way. Uh, what are examples of it, or or is that what you're asking? Well, no, I um I was you flick do. N- Believe in guilt. Like there's like that all music. I think the uh, the question, as I heard it, is Sean. You know, we're under the understanding that you don't have any guilty pleasures. Is that is that true, or is there something that you put on that? I is mean, totally, if, you know, if it's I bad. like something. Um, if, if I like something, I don't feel guilty about it because if I like something, I usually know what it is about it that I like. So, uh, if there's something, um, I I wish, you know, examples of this never really come to mind. Like when the subject comes up, um, uh, you know, I mean, there's plenty I like that isn't cool, um, for sure. Uh, and I don't worry about that at all. Um. So, I mean, usually guilty pleasures are those things that you just know are not cool. Uh, you know, like somebody might feel guilty about listening to Bad Company, but I, I don't I don't feel guilty about listening to Bad Company if I am in the mood to listen to Bad Company. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, there isn't really going to be anything that I, I feel guilty about uh, because I I know what it is about it that appeals to me and therefore it's legit there you go i think i think you're living life as it should be lived interesting uh, yeah I'm, comfortable comfortable in my own years i only went that route because early on we did do a show in which we suggested that neither of us were fans of steely dan and it looks like we're going to be on the wrong side of history there for some reason, we are living in a society which, even though they supposedly hate baby boomers, are like hooked up to the number one baby boomer nostalgia machine in the world. Like Steely Dan, at this point, culturally, literally can't be stopped. They're they're everywhere. They're you. I, I I don't know if I could name a song. That's by funny. Dan. Yeah. The millennial. You can't name a song. I, I don't think I could name a, a song by Steely Dan. Keep it that way. Like do. Do it again. You're not familiar with Do It Again. I'm looking or, at the Ricky. Don't lose that number. Uh, no, I I don't know those. Yeah. Um, reeling in the years. I'm you telling have to you, know reeling in the years. you can keep listing song titles, but I'm going to give you the same answer. Okay. Well, if, if you don't know any of those three, then I'll believe you. But, um, that that's kind of amazing in itself that that you're not familiar with any of those. Uh, I mean, you know, the OK, so, yeah, the show that we did was a banality draft um, <laughs> for Steely Dan. And and I did I did pick five Steely Dan songs I do like, uh, but I really was I don't know if I could have gotten deeper than that. Um, it was much easier. I, I will say it is definitely a lot easier to, to do the Steely Dan draft than it was to do like the Phil Collins solo draft. You did where that. I had. Yeah, we really were. Yeah. You know what it was, I, Richard? We were trying to find ways to say nice things about bands we generally didn't like. And by what? doing a draft, yep. you're picking the parts of their catalog that you do like. Oh, you guys sound yeah. like masochists. Wow, that's tough. Well, we were trying not to just um, be able to do something nice to talk about it. 
Yeah, I, I mean, some of them were were kind of fun to do, uh, but but yeah, I mean, for the most part, it was there was a bit of masochism involved. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it it uh, there are two Phil Collins solo songs I actually like. I I would say, um, in the air tonight and uh, take me home. Um, yeah, and and I didn't. I didn't go in and like listen to the whole Phil Collins catalog. I wasn't going to uh, don't hate myself that much. So I did would... do. I did do. Uh, See, I, I, I just some, I just kind of wonder, like you know, it's kind of more interesting to talk about the uh, the remake of Purple Rain by Madhu Mokhtar. <laughs> you know. Well. <laughs> Whoa, this uh, this fucking news in in my uh, in my world. There's a Purple Rain remake. Yes, it's called uh, Akunak Terlataha Tazuge. Uh, okay, I'm writing it down. Translates to rain that is the color blue with a little bit of red in it, uh, and it it stars Amdu Mokhtar. Mm -hmm. uh and is from 2015 you can uh rent it on vimeo for five dollars and it's a solid film wow i didn't uh, come looking for that information but i'm glad i'm leaving with it that is good stuff yeah and i think but, the uh purple, purple rain isn't a solid film though i mean it, it has, has great uh whoa. has great music sequences it has amazing music sequences, but then, um, you know. Yeah, I, I think this then, is a, then, a really uh, solid film, so you should check okay. it out. Okay. Uh, wow, Flick. You so know, are you saying it improves upon the original then? Wow, I'm right here. You're, you know. No, I, we've, we've talked about Purple Rain before. Um, the The... If if you take out because because this is exactly what I said to you one time before and I I think we we were understanding of each other, mm -hmm. um, but uh, if you take the music sequences out of Purple Rain and then you just have the uh, the the storyline and and that stuff you don't have it's super thin very thin. Well, I mean, but you're not going to do that because Purple Rain, you you just why even debate that question i mean you can say that about a lot of awesome films like what if you take out the cool action sequences of this and that but why why hurt your brain and alienate your friends by like you know just not worth it you know just to enjoy it for what it is and yeah purple rain has yeah. some problems with it but you know just just go with it well what well I wasn't making that my focus when when I said that. You know, like it, I'm not I'm not saying that uh, that you do, that you judge Purple Rain based on the non music sequences. You do you do judge them very much on the music sequences, but you know it, it, you you do have to sit through the other stuff though too. Is is the thing? Hmm. Uh, Prince has made some real stinkers in terms of movies. Uh, I, I to lump them all in and say that Purple Rain is just as bad as uh, Under a Cherry Moon. No, I, just, uh, I don't think you never can never was that. saying that. Okay, no, I'm was not saying that. All right, all right. I just don't want you going too far here. No, I, you know, Bob because, Dylan's movies are way because, worse, by the way. No, no, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid is an awesome film. You should check All it out. right, he gets one. Is it better than Purple Rain, though? They're different films. I mean, one's a, a cool kind of like, you know, uh, new new cinema western, and the other is not. All right, I'm going to concede that you're right on that, but let's not pretend that he hasn't made some almost unwatchable movies. Like, I think people consider the director's cut of Ronaldo and Clara to be unwatchable. You know what I mean? And I think I've heard the same. I, I mean, ugh, Master I have to abstain, is not good. I have to abstain, abstain on that one. I haven't seen it. Uh, I did I did want to to just give a final point on, on Purple Rain. 
I mean, because of the music sequences, it it makes it a thumbs up rather than a thumbs down. Right. So so yeah, just just to summarize, you know, the music sequences do matter for sure. And you don't think Morris Day is a uh, not a it doesn't just he doesn't leap off the screen? Oh for yeah, you yeah. Time? Yeah, that's a good point. Morris Day is is uh, yeah, he, he factors for sure. I mean, Prince had to put a musical foil in that film that was credible, and admittedly, he had to write the songs to do it. However, the time yeah. as a band how, had how some lucky. real musicians in it as well. Yeah, I mean, it it was yeah, kind the of time lucky they didn't then. have to go too far to find that. Yeah. Just for for Morris Day to be able to hang with Prince as well as he did at peaks at, at peak Prince, uh, I think people undervalue how good Morris Day was. And he had Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis in his band. I mean, that was a that was and Jesse and Jerome. Yeah, and you could make a case that uh, Janet Jackson's real breakthrough comes from the the Minneapolis stuff from working with people from the time yeah, and she, that really made thinking, her career like that was hot yeah i'm thinking jan jackson would, would tell you as much unless you're nasty that first uh um, uh that first uh, or the the big record control that's actually a really good album in my opinion the songs are really well written and they they're there's some bangers on that actually her the one right after that the rhythm nation that had some bangers on it She's underrated. Yeah. In, the, in the shadow of Michael, yeah. it's pretty hard. She was good. I, I guess I don't know her work outside of those two albums very well, but um, but those are two good albums. Yeah, I'll, I'll grant you that. She was a hit machine for a long time there. Her first couple albums are like exploitive a little bit. <laughs> They're just like record company specials, you know. They're nothing special, but boy... What have you done for me lately? Sounded just out of the radio. Sounded great. Boy, that was good. Good stuff. All right. Well, I, I'm. Um, I mean, Flick. I know that you're not going to diss Prince because you want to show your face in Minneapolis again someday. So I know deep down, <laughs> it's all love. <laughs> How? You know what? There, that's another. That's another music trip that that you and I need to do is uh, is visit Paisley Park. I would say. I, I would. Do that. And get a direct. Go do whenever. Not feeling it. I feel you. Um, the, you're you're breaking up again. I don't know if uh, Richard, if if you got it. It's all right. You might be the Rudy whisperer. It, it uh, could be. Yeah, yeah. Well, gentlemen, I think that with uh, declaring our our love and and respect for Prince is kind of a, a good way to. Uh, close things out. Here, here. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I know that uh, this is not the end, so uh, but 100 is a milestone, and I appreciate you inviting me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for doing it. Um, and, yeah, you'll have to let me know what, what you're saying there. Uh, but, yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks to everybody that's here. Uh, thanks to everybody who's listening to us and has well, has listened to us over uh, the course of, you know, it, we should quickly mention that it isn't just 100 episodes, it's uh, two years of doing this as well. Wow. So it's, uh, it's our 100th episode and, and our second anniversary. So there you go. And uh, definitely check out past episodes, Hello to Me Pod, Spotify, and other places. And uh, it's been a pleasure hanging with both of you. This is Richard Shirk from Oakland, California. Signing off.